So I finally received the parts that allow me to turn on the ZX Spectrum. And as I've been testing it, I found out that the joystick that came with the eBay purchase uh, is actually pinned for Atari. And after looking closely at the service manuals uh, for the ZX Spectrum, the model that I have, actually all Spectrums, it, it turns out that the pinouts for Spectrum is, is different than Atari. So Atari uh, or Sega joysticks will not work um, as is if you plug them directly into a Spectrum. So what I'm gonna do today is I've got a couple of different uh, joysticks um, here and I'm gonna, I wanna be able to test those. Um, I've got this Sega light phaser, which I'll likely cannibalize for, for parts. Uh, but the object here is that I wanna be able to uh, create some sort of adapter that will let me plug in an unmodified uh, joystick uh, and also so that I can use these joysticks without modifying the Sinclair Spectrum. Um, so stay tuned and we'll be building a, an adapter. So before I get into this build, it's somewhat important to plan ahead. And so what I've done is I've actually looked up the exact pinouts of an Atari joystick in terms of which pins are which. And I've done the same for the ZX Spectrum. And just to, just to demonstrate the differences, I'm gonna zoom in here for you. But if you take a look, you'll note that pin one for Atari is actually the, uh, it's described as the up direction. Whereas on a, on a Sinclair, it says function not used. Um, same is true for the other various pins. Um, you know, as an example, pin four is, is going to the right on an Atari, but on a Spectrum, it's, uh, it's the fire button. And I know this is true because when I plugged in the Atari uh, joystick, well, the joystick I thought was a Sinclair uh, joystick, it, it turned out that um, indeed, when every time I would move the the joystick to the right, it would issue the fire command for whatever game I was testing. So I do know that uh, that is that is indeed the case. So so what we need to do essentially is to um, take a cable, and I'm I'm going to go ahead and cannibalize the cable off of this Sega light phaser. And what I'll do is I'll I'll solder it onto um, one of these um, these connectors here, um, so that I can then simply, um, as an example, this end will go into the spectrum and this will be a female adapter. And then what I'll go ahead and do is be able to plug in an Atari joystick into the female connector uh, like so. And it'll allow me to essentially adapt um, the pins by simply uh, rearranging and crossing the pins over from one connector to the other. So um, hopefully that'll, that'll do the trick. Um, I don't anticipate any real challenges. Um, so let's get to it. So I'm going to begin by taking apart this light phaser and seeing what parts are of use. I think what I really want more than anything out of this is, uh, is the cable. Um, it's got a nice little boot on it. I'm thinking if I can uh, you know, salvage that and use the wiring appropriately, uh, maybe what I can do is similar to my Maximite build. If you haven't seen that, check out that video. But similar to that, I'd like to maybe potentially build a, a little breakout box or some sort of nice little wrapper around the uh, connectors. Um, so it's not just exposed wiring. So uh, I'm thinking that this nice little uh, rubber boot here uh, will allow me to, to do that nice and clean. Um, if I get to that point, and I, I do like the way that it comes out, um, I'll likely do another 3D print, uh, and I'll be putting all that, uh, all those files and information up on retroaxis.info. So do do be sure to check out the website. Uh, but let's see if we can get the, the screws out of this here light phaser. Funny thing about these light phasers, and, and one of the reasons why I'm, I'm cannibalizing it is, um, you know, they don't work with LCD TVs. Um, now, I did see someone on, on TV, uh, actually on YouTube recently, one of the Element four, uh, 14 guys, um, actually was, was trying to figure out how we could use a combination of like an Arduino um, and some other devices to um, actually get the, the light phasers to work. Um, on an LCD. So that'd be interesting to see if that works. I do have many more of these. Actually, this is one of about four or five of these that I've got laying around. So I think uh, getting rid of one probably won't uh, won't hurt all that much. Yeah, there's a secret screw right here. Uh, 
And that should do it. There we go. Yeah, that's interesting. I suspect there's another one hidden behind one of these stickers. Or maybe well, there we go there you go boom if you ever want to see the inside of a light phaser which i've actually never opened one up before so it's actually kind of neat um so this is your trigger a little switch here um connected to a board and it looks like it's got some sort of infrared yeah it's got an infrared light in there, which is how it would read the location of the uh, where the gun was pointing on the LCD. But yeah, nice here. You can see this 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 uh, cable is exactly sheathed as I like. Nice little area to wait. I can, I can uh, you know get it inside of a case, and I'll be able to just I'll just go ahead and yank these. Uh, I'll just cut these cords right off. There we go. Cable. We'll put that aside for now. Actually, let's count these. Make sure we have enough wires here. This may not even be enough wires. You know, this isn't even enough wires in here. This is only four. And I actually need... I need about... It looks like eight wires. Maybe seven. So yeah, this isn't even enough wires to do the job. So this may actually not work at all. Let's do a quick check and see if maybe there's some hidden wires inside this. I doubt it. <laughs> I think to save costs, I wouldn't think that Sega would put extra wiring in the sheath. But let's just check just to be certain. Yep, nope. Safe to say this is entirely a four-wire Sheath. So not going to work. Let's go back to the drawing board, see if we can find something with more wires. So the light phaser didn't work, so I've gone and retrieved a different, uh, a different controller here. Uh, I'm going to attempt to see how many, uh, before I cannibalize this one completely, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see uh, how many wires uh, this one has, uh, and we'll see. I know I need a minimum of six. Um, that's, you know, four for the directions, up, down, left, and right one for the button so that's five and then the sixth one is for a, a ground or common wire um, so we'll we'll take a look and see if um, this one fits the bill one just fell apart <laughs> got all these little silicone covers look at the dirt in here man all right so looking at here coming out of this one oh yeah we got a ton of wires coming out of this guy so uh, very quickly I can pretty much assess that this one's gonna work uh, so let's see what we got we got one two th that's three four five six seven eight nine more than enough wire so this one will do the job so let's go ahead and use this one and um, again I'll just clip this off try and save as much of the wire as, as possible so we'll use this cable is going to be perfect for what we want to do and it's got all the color coding as well so we're ready to rock so we'll go ahead and uh, discard this board as a generic some sort of generic controller Genesis. I don't think it even worked. It was in my junk bin. <laughs> so good riddance. All right. Well, thank you, controller. Let's put all this in the discard bin. All right. So here, what we need to do is come up with a color coding and decide. How we want to do this so what I've done is I've actually drawn up a chart here in the spreadsheet and what I've got is really a, a, a sort of mapping here of the of the colors up down left right button and ground if I look and see how the spectrum uh, their manual doesn't specify color coding 
Um, but here on the 2600 page, it does. Um, and again, this is really a suggestion. Honestly, I could wire this however I like. I, well, actually, no, I can't because I need to um, actually, no, I need to find out which one of these goes to which pin. So that's actually um, something to think about here, actually. There's a couple ways we could do that. We could look up the Genesis uh, controllers and, and see. And again, there's no guarantee because this is an aftermarket controller. There's no guarantee that they followed a color scheme. So we want to be really careful. Um, we can certainly make some assumptions that, you know, as an example, black is probably the ground wire, but we, don't, we never know for certain. Um, so what we want to do is we can do this one of two ways. We can use the multi multimeter and, and check it and see if uh, you know we can do it that way or we could also um, which is probably more challenging we could actually try and trace these um, to their individual items but I think that's probably going to be more trouble than it's worth it looks like some of this some of the pathways are, are covered um, and that is easy to sort out so um, so what I've got here essentially is a, a, a cable that's ready to go. I've already stripped off the ends here. The next thing I need to do is figure out um, which color goes to which pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my multimeter here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on to the tone generation setting. And what I'm going to do is essentially uh, figure out um, you know, which pin belongs to which. So the easiest way to do that here is I've actually got a... A connector. I'm going to plug the DB9 into that connector. I've got some some leads here, which is typically used for going into a PCB where you would actually solder it down. Uh, but I'm going to use these to to help me. So um, knowing how the ports start on a uh, on a female connector, the most upper left port is is pin number five, and I can actually look inside the connector here. This is an amphenol connector, uh, and I can actually verify that it's actually labeled in here. Uh, this top uh, left pin here is a one and the one over here is the five but when I so when I plug it in five and five are gonna match up so I know that so looking here uh, I now know that this first uh, pin I'm gonna bend it out so I know which one it is this is number five and we can begin the process of trying to tone out uh, the actual um, colors so what I'll do is I'll uh, just to keep myself sane I'm gonna use red lead here. I'm going to touch this pin and let's see which wire it is. Yep, there it is. It's the red wire so I know now that pin 5 is red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, stop here. I'll complete this uh, and then you, when, we, when you rejoin um, we'll move on to the next step. So stay tuned. Okay, so having completed the tone out of the pins and, and colors, um, I now am ready to essentially put this thing together. So um, as we con continue to think this through, you know, the way this is going to work is that um, this side, this plug is going to go into the Sinclair Spectrum. So the assumption is that this, this will take the pinouts uh, as assigned. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll cross this side over into this connector. Uh, which will then be Atari pinned so that as I plug in uh, Atari based joysticks, the theory here is that uh, it should just pass through. So um, let's give that a shot and see uh, and give it a test, see how it works. Okay, so I've got my soldering station heated up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by putting a little bit of tin here onto my uh, connectors just to get them primed and ready to go. So we'll start with the red one. And there we go. It's about ready there. Do the same for the other colors that I need. So we'll just do them for all of them. Okay. 
And as you go through, you want to make sure you keep your soldering tip clean. As, as I do here, I like to use this. Uh, it's like a Brillo pad, but it's specifically for, for cleaning solder off of a hot gun. Got a couple more here to tin. Prep these leads. Two more to go. Make sure they're ready. There we go. All right. Looks good. Okay, so we got those. Oh, did I miss one? A little bit more on the orange one here. That's good. So what I've basically done, if, if you're not familiar with, with soldering, is I'm actually, it's called tinning the leads. And, and what this does, it puts a little bit of um, solder on the, on the wire so that when I go to heat it up um, to the pins on the connector, it'll have a little bit of solder to just you know, melt and, and make the connection a lot easier um, when, I, when I do that. So if you want to take a look at that, I mean, this is essentially it. You see each lead has got a little bit of solder on the tip here, and that's going to help me get a, a nicer, faster uh, connection. All right, so now that I've got my tips ready to go, I'm now going to start the mapping process. So I know that coming out of the spectrum, if this, is, if this end is plugged into the spectrum, pin number five from here, which is the red, cable needs to go to Atari pin one. So pin one is this pin right here. So let me go ahead and get that going. Tip ready. Get a little tin on here. Okay. And let's get that pin connected up. Okay. There's pin one. Make that a little bit better. Not happy with that connection. Let's try that again. Line that up better. There we go. That's much better. Clean that up nice and clean. Okay, so pin one to pin five. So that's good. The next one I need to do is the pin number nine off the spectrum, which in, on my map, pin nine is my white. That needs to go to pin two. So let me get my white to pin number two. Pin number two is directly next to pin number one. Make sure I'm correct. Always <laughs> measure twice, cut once. Pin number nine, white to pin two. So let's double check that. Yeah, pin two. That's correct. All right. That did not work. What we need to do here is make a little adjustment to how I'm doing this. I think what I'm going to do is let's move these pins out. It won't matter. Just a little bend. Just to give myself some more space. And let's try that again. Retin this. Okay. 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 
I'm not quite happy with that. I'm just going to add a little bit more. There we go. Still a little off. You know, that's okay. We can fix that. There we go. That'll do. Good. Let's just take a look, make sure that's good. And again, this is, you know, this is a test. This isn't necessarily a final product here. This is a proof of concept. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do, so I need to do pin 7, which is left. And that goes to pin 3. So pin 7 is my yellow, and that's going to go on to pin 3. So I'm going to add a little more to that particular lead. A little bit more on there, be good. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. Now, okay, pin number three. Okay, let's check that one. Looks pretty good. Pull it down. Yep, that's good too. Okay, yep, good. Another good reason for pulling these down is um, it'll make it flatter and out of my way when I'm uh, resting it down. My idea here is that once I have a, a case, I can just screw this down into the case. So now let's see, pin four is the pin six of the spectrum, which is blue. So pin four is blue. So let me get my blue one. Here's pin four. Pull it down, get it ready. Okay. Let's tin it up a little more. A little bit more tin on there. Okay, that's good. A pin five. Actually, there is no pin five on this particular layout, so it looks like Atari doesn't use pin five. So it looks like, I think pin five is for the Atari paddles, but since we're just using joysticks in this uh, test, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next pin. So it looks like the next pin I'll need is pin six, which is the button. So as of right now, I've, I've done up, down, left, and right. My button um, is pin four on the spectrum. Um, and for this test, it's number six, which is, looks like that's my blue. Oh, wait, nope, incorrect. So button is four, four is gray. So that's my gray lead right here. Sometimes looking at this map, you gotta double check yourself. Remember which side's which. So, so gray is uh, pin four on the spectrum, but six on the Atari. So pin six here, yep, is this, is this one on the second row of pinouts. Really starting to get a little wobbly here. Okay. There we go. Good. Just make a quick, quick adjustment here.
It's a little sloppy. I'm going to try and clean that up just a little bit. Right, so here we are. We've got the, um, essentially the connector soldered on, uh, on this side. So um, if everything went correctly with the map that I created, then um, this side here is, is wired for Spectrum. And this side is the equivalent Atari pins for an Atari joystick. So I'm going to go ahead and, and boot up um, Dizzy, which is uh, one of the ZX Spectrum games, uh, get it fired up, and we'll, we'll test the joystick out. Um, I also found another set of documents, actually from a magazine article back from 1984 time frame, uh, where people were discussing in these articles how to use Atari joysticks or build your own joysticks as well with Atari pinouts. So there's a few tips in there that um, I may have to go back and refer to, but I'm pretty hopeful that this is going to work as is. So um, let me get that fired up and we'll take a look. So here's my ZX Spectrum. Um, it's a plus 2B, actually. I know it says plus 2A. Uh, there was actually a, a problem with the main boards on these original plus 2s, uh, plus 2As, um, and they actually had to release an updated uh, board. So it actually has a plus 2B board in it, but uh, it basically keeps all the plus 2A uh, names and all the things in, in the system. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and load Dizzy from tape. And I won't bore you with, with the details about, about um, the loading piece, but essentially you type uh, J, which is a shortcut for load, to um, quotes, hit enter, it's now ready. Press play and it'll start loading. Um, so while that's working, just to kind of show you what I've got, so I do have my, my new newly made um, crossover cable here, uh, plugged into joystick port one. I'm gonna use the, um, there's the loading sound. I'm going to use the, uh, the joystick that came with the, um, the eBay purchase uh, just because I know it did work. I was able to press to the right and verify that it did fire. Um, so, so we'll try that. I've also got a, a slick stick, which is another uh, aftermarket um, joystick. So we'll try that one as well. And then I've got the, uh, the retro axis. Uh, logo joystick here, so we'll we'll try that one as well. So we've got a few joysticks here we can try out. So we'll we'll see if we have any success. Um, if not, then we'll go back to the drawing board. So as soon as this loads, uh, we'll be right back and we'll we'll test the game. So while we're waiting for it to load, I just wanted to give a quick shout out uh, and give some props to the Retro Computer Shack. Um, so the gentleman named Ian Pretty. Um, out of the UK makes these really amazing RGB to S-cart uh, adapters. Um, and, and, and he's not paying me to do this or anything. I just really wanted to call him out because I was actually pretty impressed at how, um, first of all, how the cable was made, very high quality cable. But secondarily, I really like the fact that he provided this additional documentation, which talks a bit about um, you know, some of the concerns around S-cart to HDMI video conversions. I'd already had these, these converters for some of my other game systems uh, with the other S-cart uh, cables that I have, but I thought it was really nice that he actually took the time to actually let you know that some of these can be troublesome and actually gives you a recommendation on which HDMI converter to use. Um, he also provides this little quick little, um, essentially it's a little troubleshooting guide with his information on it. and. Uh, Anyway, really great service. I thought the customer service was good. The shipping was quick. Um, so overall, very satisfied um, with the whole experience. So if you're looking for a cable for a ZX Spectrum or perhaps another, uh, another machine, uh, do check them out at uh, www.retrocomputershack.com. So again, uh, uh, really happy. Great job, Ian. Uh, keep up the good work. Thanks a lot. All right, so Dizzy's loaded. So here I've got the slick stick uh, plugged into the adapter. I tried using that joystick that came with uh, the eBay purchase and it really just, just didn't work. So I think there might be something else wrong with it. So I just decided to cancel that test. So um, just to show you here, uh, the up button is, is, uh, is actually jump in the Dizzy game. Um, so pressing up, you see I'm actually controlling him uh, quite well. The button actually picks up the item. Oh, got shellac there. All right. So let's go back. Let's light the fire. There we go. So there you go. So the, the uh, joystick's working. Now, just to do another test, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, let me actually quit Dizzy. And I can try a different, a different joy. So let's try this guy. So let me unplug 
the slick stick. Move it out of the way. And let's try this guy out. All right, there we go. Okay, this one's doing the same thing that the other one did. And I think maybe let's try that again and see. Yeah, there we go. So jump, just as we did before. Collecting it. So yeah, working as expected. So that's all for today. Next time I'll take uh, this beginning product and I'll actually put it inside of uh, a, a 3D printed case so it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit more finished. Um, so that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Retro Axis.